Hello everyone, welcome again. We will continue with the inheritance, inheritance tax. Uh, now we will look at uh, our uh, you know, remaining part of our uh, lecture notes. I am just going to share the screen with you so that we can read our notes together and then we will do a question on our next topic as well. The next topic which you can see on your screen is called Valuation of Assets for Inheritance Tax Purposes. <coughs> on page number 68 of your lecture notes. So, first one is called a Diminution in Value Method. So what it says is that, uh, say for example, if I, am, um, if I am a donor, so if I am giving a gift and I am giving a gift of uh, shares, uh, you know, in diminution in value, the best example to give is of shares. Say for example, if I am giving shares, so if I hold some shares in APLC and I have, uh, you know, 5,000 shares in APLC, now I'm not giving all of the shares to my, you know, son, uh, I'm just giving a thousand shares out of that. Now I hope that uh, from your P2 studies and from F7 studies, you know that when you hold more shares in a company, the value per share will be higher. When you hold less shares in a company, the value per share is going to be uh, is, is going to be uh, very at low price. You know, uh, say for example, if you are uh, if you have if if you have been buying the shares in APLC, so then uh, the time came when you held 46% in that company. Now the remaining shareholders knows that in order to buy the remaining uh, five percentage so that you can have the majority shareholding in that company, you are going to pay whatever you whatever they ask from you. So the remaining 5%, you will be paying way higher than what you have paid for the first 1% in that company. So the dimension in value says, when you're transferring an asset, uh, we will not calculate the value. So in our, in our calculating the transfer of value for inheritance tax purposes, we will not take the value uh, what that donor is getting. We will, we will take the value what the donor is losing, right? So you might be thinking that it is exactly the same thing, what I am losing as a donor and what Donny is getting as a gainer. It is exactly the same thing. You might be thinking that. But it is not the same thing. Sometimes if I am transferring 1,000 shares to my uh, you know, son, now that, them 1,000 shares for him is 1,000 shares in that company. So the per share price will be lower for him. Whereas when I held, you know, say for example, 60% or 55%, so I held 55%. After giving 1,000 shares to my son, now I hold 45%. So my per share price is going to be lower. So that's what it means that when I, when I am sen selling something, when I am not selling, when I am giving gift uh, to my son or whoever, then whatever he is gaining, we will not take that value. But what I am losing, we will use that value to calculate the inheritance tax. Um, to calculate the inheritance tax, right? So let's uh, read our notes now. As you can see on your screen, it says diminution in value. The measure of value of transfer with a lifetime or on death uh, is always the, lose, uh, the loss to the transfer. The diminution in value of the of his estate, not the amount gained by the transferee. So in order to do that, what we do is we'll take total value of an estate of the transfer before transfer. So we'll take the value before transfer total value and uh, then total value of an estate after transfer and the remaining one is going to be the amount which I have transferred in actual so that is diminution in value and that is the amount which we will use for our inheritance tax purposes uh, in our questions All right so that was called diminution in value the next method is called valuing related property now, related property, do you remember, could you remind me that I told you that there were four parties, so if I transfer to them four parties, it is going to be exempt. I, I'll give you the hint. First one of which was spouse. What was the second one? Yeah, you're right, it was UK charities. The third one, qualifying political parties. And the last one, for national purposes. So these four parties are exempt parties. So if I transfer to these four part parties, it is going to be exempt. Now, valuing a related property, it says that if you transfer something to these four parties, well, although that you have already transferred to them, but for inheritance tax purposes, it will be assumed that you hold them, uh, you still hold them. Now, say for example, if, you have, if I have transferred a, a thousand shares to my spouse for a, a related property purposes, 
I will, when I, when I will calculate my value, so I will, uh, I will include the shares what I have uh, transferred to my wife as well. Now say for example, before transferring to wife, I held 6,000 shares and after transferring to wife, I held 5,000 shares. For related property rules, even after transferring 1,000 shares to my wife, I will still take the value of the 6,000 shares. So that's what it says in related property. Now another thing is that we will only use related property rules, we will only use it if it gives higher value than the diminution method. So diminution in value is another method and uh, you know related properties another method we will use the same method in re related property as well we will use the same method diminution in value in related property but in related related property we will include re related properties value uh, re when i say related property it means them for exempt parties all right so there are two different uh, you know ways to do it we will only use the related property values if it gives the higher value so it says that uh, for IUCT purposes, uh, related property uh, must be valued as a proportion of the value of the whole of the related property only if it gives higher value than diminution in value method. Related property of an individual must be valued including the value uh, property of the spouse, property given to charity, property given to political party, and property given to national purposes, so all four parties. So whatever I have transferred to these four parties, while calculating the related property, I will include them properties as well, whatever I have transferred, I will include in my property. Right? So when part or whole of the related property is sold, then the value of the uh, for inherit value for uh, value of transfer for inheritance tax purposes is going to be higher off value of transfer without a related property rules and value of uh, transfer uh, with you know rela related property rules using related property rules. So when I say uh, value of uh, uh, transfer without related property rules, we will use the diminution value in value method. And uh, in the second one, uh, I will just show you uh, on our board, it says uh, learn the method in our lecture. So we'll do a question on that uh, so that you can understand this concept in a better way. So value of transfer using related property rules. All right, so let's move to our exam kit now. Uh, this is the last question which we did in our last lecture. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's move to our next question. It's question number 13 of the BPP exam kit. Question 13 of BPP exam kit, please. Pay me one second. Uh, I will cancel the shared screen after reading the question so that we can do it on the board. Uh, question 13 of PPP exam kit and it was examined in uh, June 2013 as it says on our exam kit. Question name is Brad. Uh, please come to question number 13 of PPP exam kit. Question name is Brad. If you have any other exam kit you can open up this question if you have. Uh, its name is Brad and it was examined in June 2013. Uh, please remember, do not look at the past papers from VVP exam kit. So if you have, say, for example, Kaplan exam kit, if you cannot find this question in Kaplan exam kit, don't go to the uh, you know, past papers of the ACC's website, on the, on the ACC's website, because they are the outdated version, so there will be no use to you. You'll only confuse yourself. Right, so we're doing part B now. So in the first one, it says... Uh, uh, in the requirement section. First it says explanation uh, of the inheritance tax advantages of making lifetime gifts to individuals. Now this is very common requirement in, in the P6 exam. Uh, it has been examined, I don't know, more than 10 times uh, in our last, uh, in, in past exam papers. It is very, very common from examiner uh, to ask this question, explanation of the inheritance tax advantages of making lifetime gift. We haven't studied um, advantages of making lifetime gifts now. Uh, we will study later. But if you use your mind, you know, if you use your mind now, you can think of a couple of benefits of making lifetime gift. Say, for example, if you make a lifetime gift, you can use taper relief. If you make a lifetime gift, you might not have to pay tax at the death because you might survive for seven years, right? So, like that, if you think about it, you can think of a couple of benefits of making lifetime transfers uh, although we haven't studied this topic yet so we'll leave this one 
In the part two, it says, uh, in respect of the possible gift of 1500 shares in uh, Omnium Limited to Jenny, uh, we'll have to calculate the inheritance tax uh, of that. It is a 10 marks question. Uh, we'll just do a little part of that just to explain you how related property works and how diminution in value works. Right, so in uh, inheritance tax, first one it says explanation of the uh, tax advantages of making lifetime gifts to individuals in general and then in the two one uh, number two requirement now in, in um, you know part b a uh, sorry part b one uh, read the requirement again and it at the end it says in general now whenever you see this word in general and in the requirement section as well you can see that whenever you it's you see a word in general it means that just the bookish knowledge so you just have to copy from the notes and paste it into the uh, into the exam hall on your exam sheet on your answer answer booklet right so it is uh, exactly the same thing what you will see in your notes you just have to copy from the notes and write on your booklet and uh, so you will get the seven marks straight away easy peasy lemon squeezy right so we are doing uh, part uh, b2 in explain in respect of the possible gift of the 1500 shares in O limited to denny a calculation of the fall in value of Brad's estate which will result from the gift detailed explanation of whether or not the pro business property relief will be available we don't have to do about the, uh, nothing we don't have to do anything with that with that for now we will do it later and, and the final it says a brief statement of any tax other tax issues uh, we will not do this one as well all right anyway so let's move uh, a little at the start of the question so that we can read the question right then so the question starts from here inheritance tax planning we'll read from here so it says uh, brad's estate is worth uh, uh, approximately five million he has not made any lifetime gifts and in his will he intends to uh, and, in, uh, and in, in his will he intends uh, to leave half of his estate to his daughter and uh, his daughter name is Danny and other half to his wife Laura I pointed out that it may be advantageous to make lifetime gifts to Danny Brad agreed to con uh, consider giving Danny 1500 of his shares in Omnium limited and asked for the general summary of inheritance tax advantages of making uh, gifts to individuals then it says Omnium limited is an unquoted manufacturing company which has also owns a number of investment properties Brad was given his shares in the company by his wife on 1st of January 2013. The ownership of the, uh, you know, it is as follows. So Brad's wife has got 4,500 shares. Brad has got 3,000 shares. Um, you know, Laura's brother has got uh, 1,500 shares. Laura's wife of Brad, so. And then uh, yeah, friends, Laura's friend has got 1,000 shares as well. So altogether they are uh, 10,000 shares. Now by looking at this table, could you please tell me that how, many sh uh, how much percentage uh, does Brad has in this company? Uh, he has got 30% shares in this company if we, ignore the, if we ignore the related property. Now if we in do not ignore, if we include the related property, then could you please tell me how much percentage is uh, Brad if we include related property? Now, among these relations, could you see any, them, any of them for exempt parties? Actually, you can see the spouse here, uh, you know, Laura, uh, she got uh, 4,500 shares in this company. So if we include Laura's shares into the Brad's, uh, and Brad's percentage in this company, including related property, is going to be 75%. Just beneath that, it tells you the value per share. So if you hold uh, up to 25% in the company, um, then the value of the share is going to be 190 and it can go up to 300 pounds if you hold more than 80 percent right so we'll have to do the question now and i will just cancel the share share screen uh, and if before i want to, if before i do on the board if you want to have a go at you can do so uh, you have to do it in two ways first is ignoring uh, value we will calculate the value ignoring related property and then we will uh, take the value including related property whichever gives the higher value we will have to use that one if you want to have a go at it you can do so uh, or we will do it together now right then so now we'll do the question together uh, so in the question uh, we will do in two different ways one is including the related property another one is again uh, ignoring the related property rules 
Right then, if 1500 shares has been given, so we'll calculate the value before sharing and uh, selling the shares, before giving away the shares, and the value after uh, you know giving away the giving away the shares. So whatever the remaining one is, it is going to be our diminution in value, and we'll do it in two different ways. One is ignoring, and one is uh, we'll do it ignoring a related property. Right. So value before giving shares. So before giving shares, how many shares uh, Brad had? Uh, he had three thousand shares, and uh, he had thirty percent shareholding. So if you look at the question, uh, the beneath table, uh, what what is the share price if you hold thirty percent shares? Now the share price is uh, going to be two hundred five pounds uh, per share if you hold uh, three thousand shares. So, <coughs> excuse me. So three thousand shares at the rate of uh, two hundred five pounds. So it is going to be. Let me grab my calculator. So three thousand into two zero five. Uh, it is going to be six hundred fifteen pounds. Right. Six one five thousand. Right, so that is the value before uh, giving away the shares. Now let's deduct after value after giving shares. What is the value after giving shares? Uh, after giving fifteen hundred shares. And he had uh, 1,500 remaining. So if you held 15% shareholding in a company, uh, what is the share price? 190. Up to 25% is 190. So 190 uh, multiplied by 1,500 shares. Remember, we are using ignoring related property, right? So 100, uh, sorry, 1,500 pounds into 190 is going to be 285,000 pounds. 285,000 pounds will be deducted out of that and uh, the remaining amount is going to be 615,000 pounds 330,000 pounds right so that is ignoring a related property so if including if we do including including related property whichever is higher we will use that one including related property we will use this one now value uh, before giving the shares value before giving the shares <coughs> excuse me now value before giving the shares uh, he held 3000 shares but the percentage is going to be including the wife so altogether percentage is 75 percent now, if you uh, have 75% in, in a company, in this company, it is going to be 290 pounds per share. So uh, he held 3,000 shares uh, at the rate of 290, and it is going to be 870,000 pounds. So 870,000 pounds less a value after giving shares and uh, if after giving the shares the value is going to be 1500 shares because his, his remaining shares are 1500 but the value per share is going to be how much now the 15 shares have gone so he held f uh, 1500 shares for himself and the wife shares are 4500 so 6,000 shares altogether, 60%. If you have 60%, the uh, per share price is uh, 240 shares, uh, sorry, 240 pounds per share. So 240 multiplied by 1,500, which is going to be 360,000 pounds, right? So if we deduct this one out of the 870,000 pounds, uh, it is going to be 510,000 pounds, right? Now this one is also diminution in value. In value, 
and it is also diminishing in value. That is by how much his value has been reduced. That's why it is called diminishing in value. And uh, we will have to take higher of these two, and we know which one is higher, 510,000 pounds. So that is the amount which will be taken as value uh, while calculating the, while calculating the uh, inheritance tax. Right? So we'll just do this portion. Uh, one is ignoring related property, another one is including related property. Uh, we'll have to take the diminution in value anyway. So whichever is high, we'll have to use that value. Uh, 510,000 pounds is uh, higher in this case, including related property. We'll have to use that one. All right. So that's it for this video, and we will continue with inheritance tax in our next video, and uh, we'll uh, see remaining bits and pieces of our history. Thank you very much, and goodbye.